So now let us follow up our very straightforward discussion of spans by an even more straightforward discussion of spanning sets. And the only intriguing part of this video will be the question that I'll leave you with. So here's the definition. A spanning set is any set of vectors whose span is the entire space. So let me illustrate that definition with a few examples. Let's start with geometric vectors. Here we have two geometric vectors arranged like this. And our question is, is this a spanning set for the space, for the three-dimensional space? And the answer is, of course not, because the span of these two vectors is the plane they lie in. You're not able to get the entire space, only the vectors in this plane. So this is not a spanning set for the three-dimensional space. Let's add a third vector. And these three vectors don't lie in the same plane. Now do we have a spanning set for the entire space? And the answer is yes, we do. We haven't clarified this point, but we will soon enough. But it's, I still submit that it's intuitively clear that these three vectors by linear combination generate all other vectors in the space. And so yes, these three vectors form a spanning set for the three-dimensional space. Let's add a third, uh, excuse me, a fourth vector, like this. Now, is this still a spanning set? Well, of course it is, because by augmenting a set of vectors, we cannot take the spanning property away. We can only make it better. So if the smaller set was a spanning set, then Oh, the larger set is a spanning set as well. Okay, there you go. Here's another example. What if all four of these vectors are in the same plane? Is this still a... <laughs> Would that still be a spanning set for the space? Let me actually do it. And the answer is no, because these four vectors can only generate other vectors in the same plane. So no, this is not a spanning set for the three-dimensional space. So having a sufficient number of vectors is not enough. They also have to be arranged properly. And also you're seeing that the concept of a spanning set is a relative concept because this set of vectors actually spans the plane they're in. So with respect to the plane they're in, they are a spanning set. It's just that for the entire space, they're not a spanning set. So I think these few examples give you a perfectly good idea of what a spanning set is. Now let's talk about polynomials. Now that we have the intuition, the geometric intuition, let's see if we can use that intuition for the al for algebraic kinds of vectors. So is this right here a spanning set for the space of quadratic polynomials? Well, it's actually not such an easy question to answer. Soon enough, when we talk about dimensions, we will learn that the space of quadratic polynomials, like the three-dimensional space, is actually three-dimensional. Another example of geometric concepts making their way over into the algebraic world. And there, by geometric analogy, two vectors will not be enough, no matter how they are arranged. But that's in the future. Right now, we're still not able to make this argument. So can we make a more insightful argument, a more ingenious argument that would convince us that these two polynomials are, do, not span, do not span the entire space of quadratic polynomials? So you can pause the video and think about it a little bit because if you come up with the answer yourself, you'll really enjoy it. I'll just give you one hint that it has to do with the property that these polynomials share that we've discussed before. Well, here comes the explanation. This is not a spanning set because these two polynomials share the property that their coefficients add up to zero. Do you see that that's true for both of these polynomials? Synonymously, it means that both of these polynomials pass through zero at x equals one. But to put it yet another way, they have a root at x equals one. And then it's not just some wishy-washy arbitrary property, it's a very special property. It's a property that you cannot break by linear combinations. Previously, we would describe it as a property that you cannot break by adding vectors together. 
and multiplying them by numbers. But now we have this wonderful term linear combinations. So we'll just say it's a property that one cannot break by linear combinations. Meaning that if any two polynomials have that property, then any linear combination of those polynomials will have the same property. And it is one of those properties. Properties like this are called linear, and we'll talk about them in depth a little bit later. But for now, you just have to admit that that's easy to see. And because these polynomials have this property, they're not able to span the entire space of polynomials, because some polynomials don't have that property. If these polynomials can only give us other polynomials that have this property, and many polynomials don't have this property, well, then you're not able to generate those polynomials by linear combinations of these polynomials. So there you go. This cannot be a spanning set. This is not a spanning set by this very, I would call it ingenious, or at very least insightful linear algebra argument. And you should feel very gratified because you've just made an argument for impossibility. You showed that something is impossible to do. It is impossible to get all possible quadratic polynomials by linear combinations of these polynomials. And this observation of impossibility is something that hasn't happened frequently in your mathematics career. Well, in linear algebra, it happens quite frequently. And as you can see, it's a very elegant way to do it. It wasn't a mechanical proof. It's not that you tried a million different things and none of them worked, so you threw your hands up in the air and said, I don't think it's possible. It was a very elegant and surgical way to show that something's not possible. All right, well, let me leave you with the following intriguing question, which will, once again, seem very complicated, but later on you'll think it's the simplest question in the world. Here it is. So if we, if we consider the span of these two polynomials, and of course, all the polynomials within the span have the property that their coefficients add up to zero, or use any one of those other synonyms for this property. So the span of these two polynomials form a little vector space of their own. That was the subject of the video on spans. So do these two polynomials form a spanning set for the subspace of polynomials whose coefficients add up to zero? Just to clarify that question a little bit, that yes, any linear combination of these two polynomials have that property. But does that mean that you can get all possible polynomials that have this property? Or could there be other polynomials that have this property that these polynomials could not generate by linear combination? The answer could be yes. The answer could be no. The answer could def would definitely be no if we only considered one of these. Right? Because with this one polynomial, you can only get other polynomials that have this property. But you couldn't get this one, because when you only have one polynomial, all you can do is multiply it by a number. You can multiply it by minus 3, you're not going to get this one. You're only going to get this one coefficient, right? So with this one polynomial, the answer would be definitely it's not a spanning set for that very important subspace. But with these two, do you have a spanning set? And now moving on to R3, I would ask the same question. Now very clearly, as we detected before, this is not a spanning set <clears throat> for R3 by the same argument. Because all you can get out of these uh, elements of R3 is other triplets of numbers where the middle entry is zero. So it's not a spanning sp <clears throat> set for R3. But can you get all possible, all possible elements of R3 where the middle entry is zero. Question similar to this one, just as difficult to answer at this point, but just as good to think about at this point, and we'll come up with very simple answers very soon.